One of the best parts of my job as president of the Interfaith Youth Corps is meeting inspiring young people who are bringing their peers together across the lines of faith to make their campuses and communities a better place for everyone. Today, I wanna to share with you a few stories of these young people. Let me start with a young Christian leader, Greg, from my alma mater, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Last year, when the tragic earthquake in Haiti affected millions of people, Greg knew that his campus group, Interfaith in Action, had to do more than watch the news. Greg, who had attended Interfaith Youth Corps' previous conference on a special scholarship for outstanding leaders, took everything he'd learned there and proposed a bold goal. He wanted to bring together a religiously diverse group of students and community volunteers to package over a million meals to send to Haiti. Interfaith in Action partnered with the Salvation Army and got to working. One weekend last April, they gathered over 8,000 religiously diverse volunteers and ended up packing over a million meals to send to earthquake survivors in Haiti, 12,000 more than a million to be exact. They did more than package meals though. Throughout the weekend, they asked one another, why do you serve? And explored the inspirations to serve from different religious traditions. And as they were volunteering together, they were building bridges across faiths, showing the world what can be accomplished if we come together to serve the common good. 900 miles from Chicago at Wesleyan University in Connecticut, the friendship of two interfaith leaders has left a, laughed, a lasting impact on their campus. Rachel is a young Jewish woman who attended Wesleyan University and was an alumna of Interfaith Youth Corps College Fellows Alliance. Her Muslim friend, Nadim, was also an alumnus of the program. Now, Jews and Muslims form friendships on college campuses across America all the time. But what makes Rachel and Nadim's friendship an interfaith friendship is not just that they come from different faith traditions, but also that they took the time to find common values between those traditions. What makes them interfaith leaders is that they took the time to act on those values. The common value Rachel and Nadim found was service, and the common practice they discovered was fasting. In each of their religious traditions, they realized that by foregoing food, they more closely understood those who live in poverty every day, and they felt called to help ease those people's struggle. Rachel and Nadim realized that the bridge between service and fasting within their respective traditions also happened to be a bridge between their two different religions. When he was an Interfaith Youth Corps Fellow, Nadim organized a fastathon on campus during the holy month of Ramadan to promote understanding and service. One year later, when Rachel was an Interfaith Youth Corps Fellow, she built off Nadim's event and the insight she gained from their friendship and organized an Interfaith, an interfaith fastathon during Ramadan. The event engaged not only a full quarter of the Wesleyan campus, 800 students who fasted for a day and donated their meals to a community soup kitchen and food pantry, but also the event engaged the broader Middleton, Connecticut community. The local Rotary and Kiwanis clubs skipped lunch at their meetings for a week and donated their money to the, to be, uh, to the local shelters. Several members of local churches and faith communities did the same. Through this initiative, Rachel and the campus's interfaith leaders raised over $11,000 for their local pantry. These students made it clear that this event is about more than being hungry together. It is about appreciating the shared value of service illuminated through their common fasting practices and acting on it together. Rachel told me, fastathons caused me to connect personally with the contribution I'm making and to reflect on the issue of hunger, not just for the five minutes it takes me to make a donation, but for the entire day. Nadim agreed, saying, the fastathon is a perfect demonstration of interfaith in action. I'm not okay that our neighbor is hungry. Neither are you. Let's do something tangible, tangible about it together. The fastathon at Wesleyan continues, even though Rachel and Nadim have, have since graduated. Leadership has transitioned to students of other faith traditions who are trained in interfaith leadership. The event has grown into a successful and sustainable program, from raising $4,000 its first year to raising $17,000 for local causes and mobilizing 1,400 students to participate in its most recent year. 
I'll finish with one last story. The story of a young woman from Maryland who has been an interfaith leader since she was 15 years old. Aubrey learned about Interfaith Youth Corps when she was watching a morning show three years ago. She saw interfaith leaders being interviewed about their work and realized that what those young people were doing was important to what she'd seen on the news about religions not getting along. Aubrey knew she wanted to be a part of it. She met with a local imam who int introduced her to a young Muslim named Ziad from her local community. They got together, Ziad and Aubrey, and organized an interfaith council in their city, calling it Frederick Interfaith Youth. They talked to people at their high school, Aubrey's Catholic Church, Ziad's mosque, about why it was important to do things together. And then they made it happen. Over the next couple years, Aubrey and Ziad organized a series of interfaith service projects. One year, they staffed a soup kitchen on New Year's Eve, a notoriously difficult evening to get volunteers. They've landscaped houses for a nonprofit that services mentally ill in conjunction with a dialogue about why it was important for them to engage in that activity. In the year that President Obama was inaugurated, Aubrey and Ziad led a service trip to, Martin Luther, to, to Washington, D.C. for Martin Luther King Jr. Day, beautifying the Anacostia River. And they didn't stop there. Aubrey formalized the partnership between her Catholic church and a local mosque, bringing together the two communities in her town. She never forgot that just as she had heard about the Interfaith Youth Corps one morning on TV, others needed to hear about what she and her group were doing as well. Aubrey and Zia told the world about their story, reaching out to media to spread the word. When there was an op-ed in the local paper criticizing youth involvement in interfaith work, Aubrey wrote to that paper talking about why she felt it was crucial for young people to be involved in interfaith cooperation and why she was inspired to do exactly that as a Catholic. Aubrey is a freshman in college now and is already becoming an interfaith leader on her campus. One of the greatest things about young leaders like Aubrey, Rachel, Nadim, Greg, and others is that they're always asking Interfaith Youth Corps the question, what more can we do? How can we keep building this movement? And I'm thrilled to share with you the news on our latest campaign. We call it Better Together, and we hope it will accomplish just that for the whole country. The Better Together campaign asks students to do three things. First, speak out about the importance of interfaith cooperation in the world and on your campus. Second, mobilize your peers to participate in interfaith action on a social issue that's close to your heart. Third, sustain these efforts on your campus through leadership transitions and further interfaith action. I'm so looking forward to telling you all about the stories that come out of this campaign. I know that students across the country are ready to show that in America, we don't discriminate against people of any religion. In America, we will not be divided by faith. In America, everyone has a place. In America, we are better together.